In this video, we are forecasting a series of storms that will bring heavy snow, rain, and severe weather to many in the U.S. The Storm Prediction Center has already put out a slight risk of severe weather for Wednesday and a rare Day 6 outlook to kick off 2022. We're going to go over every aspect of this storm with no hype, no nonsense, just facts. Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. I hope you guys are enjoying the holiday season. I was hoping that the weather would kind of take a little bit of a vacation during this time of year, but it hasn't. We have a whole lot to talk about today. So as always, if you haven't already, slap that like button for the YouTube algorithm and maybe share this on social media so we can get this out to as many people as possible. Hit that subscribe button and let's start talking about the weather. All right, here's a big old look at the United States of America. And as you can see, there's a little bit of stuff going on out there right now. Over here on the West Coast, we had that continuous stream of moisture once again coming over California, hitting those Sierra Nevada mountains. We're getting a little bit of rain in the Central Valley and along the coastline of California, but it's just a bunch of snow uh, on the summits of the Sierra Nevada mountains. Lots of roads have actually been closed here, uh, especially some of the back roads that connect uh, Nevada and California. So they've just been dealing with a lot of rain and snow over here, and it's going to continue. And if we skedaddle over here to the east just a little bit, we have some more rain and snow. In fact, it's mostly snow. We've got a little bit of a problem with our radar, but most of the northern side of this precipitation here is snow. We actually had thunder snow earlier this morning in Wisconsin, and this is all going to devolve into some very light snow and rain as it gets over here here into New England. But this quick hitting storm up here is the leader of our parade, okay? It's kind of like the uh, engine of the train and the next car is getting ready to come through and we're gonna be talking about some more snow, some more rain and some more severe weather. Let's talk about that on the weather models. All right, starting off here on the East Coast with the NAM three kilometer model, we're gonna watch our current storm take off. If you wanna keep up with the date and time, it's right there above my head in Eastern time because that's where I'm from. So let's go ahead and put this into motion. Like I said, it basically just hits a brick wall and dissipates over here in Pennsylvania and New York. Uh, some of you guys are going to see some isolated, you know, sleet, freezing rain and snow and definitely some uh, just rain, but it's not going to be very significant at all. Okay. Some heavier snow is going to be up here in Ontario and Quebec, but for the most part, we are just dealing with scattered showers here and there. Now I'm calling this leading storm, the quick hitting double whammy, because not only do you have this little thing that caused thunder snow earlier in Wisconsin, but if we scooch over here to the central U S you can see, we got another little influx of moisture coming up from the Gulf of Mexico and we have another little disturbance coming across the Rockies here that's going to try uh, to culminate and form something, once again, in pretty much the same areas that saw snow uh, with this last little system. We've got heavy rain and a couple thunderstorms in the Mississippi River Valley kind of like crashing into that cold air there in the upper Midwest. And I think we might see a couple instances of thunder snow once again, maybe in Wisconsin around 2 p.m. tomorrow as another area of snow moves through. Let's watch this thing go through the Ohio Valley. Remember on the Southern side, we're talking about about some general like garden variety thunderstorms and just basically some rain. Nothing severe down here as of yet, but we've got pretty heavy snow up here in Wisconsin and Michigan uh, tomorrow evening. So make sure you're ready for that. I don't think it's going to be a blizzard. I don't think you're going to have any problems getting the snow out of the way, but it's going to snow. Don't say I didn't tell you. And then of course, after a really quick burst of heavy snow in Western New York and portions of PA, uh, you know, it hits that wall again and just nothing happens over here in New England. So, you know, good news for you guys. If you, you know, if you don't want anything to happen, but bad news if you're like me and you just don't like boring weather. Speaking of boring weather, we have this stationary boundary here. It's kind of like the roadway that these storms are using to go from the southwest to the northeast, and it's just going to be sticking around this same area for a while, and we're going to have a lot of these, uh, you know, thunderstorms and just, you know, moderate rain showers train over the same areas over and over again from Tennessee through Kentucky into West Virginia, and especially here in the Appalachian Mountains, I'm kind of concerned for the very slight chance of some isolated flash flooding problems. So just make sure you, you're on the lookout for that if you're in a flow prone area. Snow totals for the second part of our double whammy up here is looking like about three inches of snow for a lot of people, especially there in Wisconsin, northern areas of Minnesota, three or four inches. Looks like Michigan, you're missing out on the heaviest portion of the snow with the vast majority of the state getting around an inch. And then of course, not much at all happening over here in the Northeast, especially in New England. But you guys are going to get yours. You know you will. Okay, so zooming out, looking at the broad picture of our double whammy. There's whammy number one. There's whammy number two. Now, did you catch this? Look at this. What's this? You're thinking, what the heck's that got to do with anything, Ryan? <laughs> well, watch it here as I pull this forward. It skips right over Mexico and launches itself into the United States. And this is the sneaky little piece of energy that's going to cause our next storm, which may actually pose a significant severe weather threat. So let's talk about that now. All right, moving right along to the Euro model now, we are going to talk about this severe weather threat that we may have coming up down here on Wednesday in the southern portion of the U.S. We are starting off looking at the 500 mil 
parallel bar wind speeds. This is like the uh, jet stream and it really paints the picture to let us know what's happening here. We talk a lot about troughs and ridges on this channel. Obviously we have a little bit of a ridge down here in the southeast leading up to our next storm and we have a trough over here. Now watch what happens as I pull this forward. There is a very slight <laughs> very slight little kink in the jet stream here uh, at the 500 millibar level that is going to try to act as a trough ejection, go off to the northeast and bring up some moist air into the warm sector over here of the southern portion of the U.S. and cause some severe weather. Now, if you weren't looking for it, you would barely even see it, but there is a trough there and there is reason for concern because there's enough energy, there's enough strong winds in that jet stream to really kick off a little bit of action down here in the southern United States. States. And those jet stream winds are actually going to funnel down a little bit closer to the surface and bring us some tornado juice. All right, this is the 850 millibar level, the lower level jet stream. Uh, we refer to these uh, colors over here as tornado juice, and we have a little bit of it in place now uh, for Wednesday afternoon and evening. And this is why, once again, we're starting to think that maybe we have a little bit of a problem arising with uh, some severe weather happening down here on Wednesday. And one of the reasons we think we're going to have this problem is because, like I said, that little trough, our little little wave in the upper levels of the atmosphere is going to do some work to bring some moisture up into the southeastern portion of the U.S. Remember, those trough ejections, the reason they're important is because they are what do work to get things moving around in the atmosphere. And when stuff moves a lot, that's how you get weather. <laughs> Specifically down here in the south, we've got a lot of rich moisture moving up north into the Mississippi River Valley and the Tennessee Valleys here. You know, on December 29th, it's not very often that you see dew points in the upper 60s and lower 70s. And usually, when you do see that, you end up getting severe weather. So the way this will likely play out is we're going to have a little bit of a warm-up section or a prefrontal area of storms go through Alabama and Georgia early in the morning on Wednesday. And then that warm sector is really going to start to advect to the north and east. And that's what's going to fuel our main event here, our actual severe weather event on Wednesday in the afternoon hours. Okay, so as we get closer to the storm, we're going to get a higher resolution view of it. And I will be the first one to let you see it. I just want to give you a heads up. Some big storms are coming down here. The Storm Prediction Center does have that slight risk of severe weather. I would not be surprised to see this umped up to an enhanced risk, mainly because of this right here. Once again, that lower level jet stream is kicking up around 40 or 50 knots. That is going to cause some spin in some of these storms, and we could definitely get some naders out of this nader juice right here. Once again, I'm going to be updating you daily on this, so follow me here on YouTube, subscribe, follow me on Twitter and everything else, and I promise you will be the most informed person on this storm. All right, zooming back out and looking at the Euro model once again. Remember, the title of this video is a parade of storms is coming through. It's not clickbait. It's not hype. It's not a joke. This is real. We have multiple storms coming through, and now we're talking about what's hopefully the caboose. All right, because this one looks like it's really going to kick off uh, 2022 with a bang. First of all, here we are on Wednesday into Thursday with our storm system that's producing the potential severe weather in the southeast. That's going to get out of here and just cause some rain over here in the mid-Atlantic regions. Nothing too crazy to worry about there. However, your focus should be over there on the west coast right now. Look at that. We have this big piece of energy coming down from the northwest, literally going almost due south and we have another very large warm and juicy piece of energy coming up from the southwest we are literally going to see not only the phasing of two separate systems here but more than likely the phasing of the polar and subtropical jet streams and whenever that happens the atmosphere is usually cooking up a very big storm and I do think that's what we're talking about here today okay back to that 500 millibar wind speed map look at this phasing look at that two completely different systems wrapping around each other and that is what a trough looks like boys and girls it is positively tilted and it is definitely moving stuff around especially over here on the eastern and southeastern side of the U.S. look at that trough ejection as it goes through absolutely kicking up those 500 millibar winds to well over a hundred knots in some places and of course we got to go closer to the surface and look at that tornado juice. Look at this, 850 millibar low level jet stream winds. I'm telling you guys, I think we're gonna have an even better shot at seeing some very significant severe weather with this storm right here. We talked earlier about the severe weather that we could be getting on Wednesday and how the rich moisture coming up from the Gulf of Mexico played a huge role in that. Well, on the January 2nd storm here or the January 1st storm, the timing isn't really nailed down yet. But whenever this storm happens here, the same factor comes into play, but we have even more moisture now and 
end, we have a dry line. We actually have a big cold front that's going to sweep that moisture away. That cool, dry air coming in and undercutting the warm air is going to cause some updrafts. And once again, I do think we're going to see some very significant uh, severe weather during this time frame. It's too early to say exactly who's going to get it, but it's going to be somewhere down here in the southeast. Here's that rare day six outlook from the Storm Prediction Center. This will move around a little bit, but this one has the potential of becoming something big. It will likely require a live stream of some sort. So obviously we are going to be keeping a very close eye on this. Please like this video, subscribe, turn notifications on if you want to stay updated on it. All right, now you guys know it's not just the severe weather that we're looking at here. This is going to be a multifaceted storm and it's going to be a massive storm that affects a lot of people. We also have to talk about this blue stuff on the top. Okay, so this storm is going to be strong enough to really influence that cold air that's building up in Canada and bring it down to the south and kind of mix some of that Gulf moisture in with it. And we could be talking about some heavy snow in portions of Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas around 4 p.m. on January 1st, okay? And look at this. You also have a big pink band here in the middle. We could be talking about some isolated areas with ice, freezing rain and sleet. Once again, it's way too early to be talking about an ice storm or uh, any uh, major impacts that are going to come from that, but it's another thing that we have to watch closely as we go forward. Check out how that snow becomes heavy around 1 a.m. on January 2nd in the Ohio Valley and Midwest, okay? We've got heavy snow in Indianapolis here. We've got heavy snow in Northwest Ohio. The thing is, though, is this is such a quick-moving storm. It's not going to last long. A lot of people over here in the Ohio Valley, the Mid-Atlantic, and the Appalachian regions are going to see snow, and as of right now, it looks like we might even see heavy snow, but even if that does happen, it's not really going to stick around long enough to accumulate in big numbers. And then, of course, you can see that exiting the northeastern portion of the U.S. late in the day on January 2nd. So, you know, this has went across the entire United States in a very, very short period of time. So here's a look at the total amount of snow that could fall over the next 186 hours, okay? So not all of this is just from the storm that we're talking about, but as you can see, a lot of snow is going to be falling over here in the uh, west, uh, across the plateaus and even into the Rocky Mountains as all these systems do come over from that way. But look at this. We could be talking about two or three inches of snow as far south as into Lubbock, Texas, or just north of there. A lot of Kansas getting two or three inches of snow. And specifically with this New Year's storm or this uh, January 1st and 2nd storm, we could be talking about two or three inches of snow through much of Missouri into central Indiana. In fact, around central Indiana through Ohio and into Pennsylvania, you guys could actually be talking about over six inches of snow. But remember, this main axis, this big band, of snow here. It's going to happen, but it could set up a little bit further south than this or a little bit further north, okay? This is not an official forecast. This is not what I think is going to happen. I'm just letting you see what the models are showing right now. And then, of course, we also get some additional snow up here in upstate New York through Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Like I mentioned earlier, there might be a couple areas that experience some problems with freezing rain and sleet. We're going to keep a very close eye on this, but as for right now, I'm not 100% confident on who's going to see what just yet. Now, what I am confident about is we are going to get a break in the southern and central and southeastern portion of the U.S. from this warm air. Now, the warmer than average temperatures have been welcomed from a lot of people, but me personally, I like the cold. And this big storm system, this massive storm system is going to allow this big area of cold air to finally crash down into the uh, pretty much the entire lower 48 with much cooler than average temperatures, making it all the way down into southern Texas and way down into the Gulf of Mexico even. It's going to be quite a bit colder there in the Ohio Valley on January. January 3rd. And that cooler air is going to hang out on the East Coast and the Southeast for a little bit. But of course, as we go way down the road uh, towards January 5th, that warm air is building back up again, guys. We're, we're just in a permanent ridge here, it seems like. And still, even with this massive storm, it's not a permanent cold snap for our winter yet. So uh, we'll see. We'll see. And that's all the weather talk I have for you today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Again, if you want to hear from me more than once a day, follow me over on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that stuff. Seriously, I'm constantly posting updates over there. Also, feel free to join our Discord server. There's a link in the description. Lots of good stuff in there as well. But of course, most importantly, slap that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and turn notifications on, okay? And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Woo!